am so excited guys. Today I am here with Ashley Williams and Ashley is a homeschooling mom of four as well as a personal trainer. And so today we're going to be just doing a little, uh, well, tea chat on the couch after school. <laughs> Do you hear any background noise? We have six kids that we've thrown upstairs to have a play date, <laughs> right? To have a play date while we sit here and do this. So if you hear that, that's what that is. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here today and doing this interview with me. I'm so excited. So my first question is, how did you start homeschooling? So I um, started homeschooling about two years ago, and it really was not just for one thing. It was for lots of different reasons. Um, but we just hadn't had great experiences in the schools we were in. And um, my husband was missing out on a lot of time with the kids. And we wanted to be more in charge of the things we were learning. They were learning. And so we just started exploring homeschooling. And we just kind of came to that choice pretty easily. If you are just looking at starting homeschooling, you probably have a lot of questions. Like, what does it look like? How do I do this? Jumping into it with four kids, I mean, were you nervous about that? Kind of tell us about the process you went through going from my kids are in school to I'm pulling them out of school and we're going to start homeschooling. Yeah, so that's a really good question because there was definitely a lot there that I looked at. Um, I started watching a ton of YouTube videos Yay, um, YouTube. about other moms and just kind of seeing how moms of many kids did school because I think it is a little bit different than if you have only one child that you're homeschooling. The first thing I did was I just really watched a lot of different videos about curriculums and things like that. Um, and I knew that I needed something that could work for multiple ages. Um, so that kind of narrowed down my search. Um, and so then once I found something that I thought was suitable, I really started watching more YouTube videos <laughs> on that. Isn't and, YouTube amazing? Yeah, you can and find anything on YouTube. YouTube really was really helpful because I got to see it in action and I got to see how it um, worked instead of just like looking through a catalog or looking at something. I was able to like see moms using it and see how it worked. That's kind of how I arrived as far as curriculum goes. But mentally, it was kind of scary. Yeah. Um, but I just really um, felt like this was the right thing to do. And I just really um, relied on prayer and just like, you know, I knew that I would be equipped to handle it to the best that I could. And I also knew, and this sounds really bad, but I knew that based on the situations that were occurring in the schools, um, that there really couldn't be too much worse, yeah. if that sounds awful. Yeah. But that was kind of where my heart was at. And so I thought, well, if all I do is teach my child how to learn confidently again, then we're succeeding. Yeah. And so that took a lot of the pressure off of like, how am I going to do this? Um, and then as far as like routine went, I just kind of figured that out as we started rolling with yeah. it. Day one was very like robotic Fun. and <laughs> yeah. And so we just got through it, but the days got easier yeah. the longer we went. Yeah. How do you homeschool four kids? I mean, I have two kids and, um, I mean, we homeschool half the day. And I know you're working mom, and we're going to talk about that because that is a huge piece yeah. of who you are, is not just a homeschooling mom, but also a working mom. Mm -hmm. And so how do you homeschool for kids? Can you give us kind of, I know you have on your YouTube channel that we'll link down below. All of Ashley's information will be linked down below. But tell us just off the cuff, what does a homeschool day look like? A typical homeschool day with four kids. So a typical homeschool day for us involves me leaving my house before homeschool even starts. I love it. So we wake up, we do our morning routine, everybody gets dressed and fed, and then I'm usually at the gym training clients by nine o'clock, even sometimes eight o'clock. And so our morning wake up time depends on that. However, like the night before, I definitely set all of our school stuff out so we're ready to go right when we come home. We get started, that's usually around 11-ish, um, and we take like a mid- break for lunchtime about an hour into school and then we usually have one hour to an hour and a half after lunchtime so our school hours are kind of like 11 
to three-ish, depending on the day. That's how much time I allow for that. Anything we're not done with by three o'clock kind of just gets moved to the next day. That's the plan, but I haven't had to do that yet yeah. because we're we're able to accomplish it all during that time. So the way that works well for me with having four kiddos is um, seat placement is a big deal to me. So um, my youngest one, who's four, sits right here on this side. Um, and we, we do school at our dining room table right now. So um, she sits right here because she needs the most help. Then my first grader sits on the opposing side, and that also keeps them from Separation. messing with each other. And then um, my older son sits across, and then my older daughter sits across right here. So they're across from me, so I'm still able to look at them and interact with them and then side to side. And that is a really important tool I think when you're homeschooling many kids is to be able to bounce around between them as they need help. Um, a rule that we developed in our homeschool that helps me homeschool for kids is um, I have lists kind of like a checklist for my older kids so they know what to work through. So we do our group school first mm -hmm. and the little ones kind of just listen and they do get bored sometimes so I try to give them something to keep their hands busy but the older two we do that all together and then everyone starts their independent work mm -hmm. and the way that I have it ordered is um kind of easier to more difficult subjects that's a really and, good tip yeah. yeah and so they're working on easier things that they can simply read instructions and execute while I'm working on letters and phonics and things with the younger two that they need my full attention. And then usually they're almost done with that portion as the older two are getting to the more difficult portion of their school day. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a rule with the older two, just like in a public school setting, you know, you have to raise your hand and sometimes the teacher can't always come immediately over to you. So we have that same rule in our homeschool. My kids, my older two know that if there's something they don't understand, or we're learning something new, I'll tell them right off the bat, I want you to not do this first. I want you to do this review first. And then we're going to come back to that because then I'll be done with the younger two and able to fully give them my full attention. So that rule is really helpful because otherwise they're all shouting mom at one time and then that's when you go a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the other part I want to talk about. You know, um, you do watch a lot of homeschool things online, right? Because yeah, yeah. that's what, I mean, that's how I got into yeah. it also, just seeing what other women are doing in their school. But there is a level of crazy that yes. happens in homeschool <laughs> that isn't always documented, right? Totally. So right. what is something or a, a way that you work through the crazy? Because it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Yeah. Your kids aren't all sitting down doing what they should be doing at all times. Yeah. It's not like we have this special woman power to be able to be doing this homeschool thing. Right. So can you give our audience um, a tip on like, how do you handle the crazy? That's one of the beauties of homeschooling is that if there ever is an issue or a character trait that is coming out in your children, that isn't something that you would necessarily want them to um, carry with them or let that behavior come, become a pattern, you can kind of address it right away. And so for me, um, I try not to get frustrated, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes I am frustrated, but I really try to take that moment for whatever it is and really address it head on. So of course, depending on what it is would depend on the severity of the consequence or whatever we might do. Um, but I think that that is one of the most like, like a big blessing of homeschooling is that if your kids are doing something, you're right there and able to talk them through it, walk them through it, figure out why they're reacting this way, see what you can do um, versus you know, say in public school, if they're modeling behaviors that they're seeing from their peers, you're not there to address it. And then those things can become um, behavioral patterns and learned behaviors just by peer influence. And so with homeschooling, it's definitely not all rainbows and sunshine. Um, if only it were. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> if there is an interruption or someone's having a really difficult day, often what I'll do is I'll just excuse them from the homeschool table because I do have an expectation when they're at the table, especially because I do have two younger kiddos. The older two definitely, um, I wouldn't say, are held to a higher standard, but an appropriate standard for their age. Yeah. And if they're not able to... Um, focus that day or they're grumpy, um, you know, I'll let them, I'll say, why don't you go up to your room and I want you to sit there for 20 minutes and have quiet time and I want you to come down again and we'll try this again. Mm -hmm. And the part 
of have a perk of homeschooling lots of kids is there's natural competitiveness yeah. between the siblings and you don't need to even do anything they just naturally compete with each other and they do not like when someone is done with school and Before. they are not done I know. and so they are like 20 minutes in my room they're yeah. gonna be done and then you say well yeah what are you gonna do yeah and so it doesn't happen often but that is kind of the method that I use so that's leading into my next question which is about discipline in your homeschool is discipline different for you as a parent than it is as a teacher or does though do the discipline tactics kind of go hand in hand uh, because, you know, if our children were going away, they would be with a different teacher that would have different rules and expectations versus when they're home. So how do you and your husband um, address that in your homeschool, the disciplinary piece of it? Um, when I first started homeschooling, I did have this kind of pressure on myself um, to react how I thought maybe a teacher in, a, in, a, in school would react to my child in that situation. And I kind of felt like that wasn't really natural and that wasn't really who I was obviously because I'm their mom so I can of course have more authority than just say you know a teacher they they're limited on what they can say and what they can do and I found myself kind of in that awkward place of really not knowing how to handle them during school with discipline versus um you know, how I would discipline them if we weren't doing school and someone hit each other, you know, I kind of worked through that a little bit. And so now I would say, and this wasn't always that way, but I would say that it, it, it is pretty seamless. Um, what, what goes for homeschool goes in our house in general. I will say that there are less disciplinary circumstances when we're doing school because they're focused on doing school versus when they're playing upstairs and someone takes something or, you know, yeah. someone slams the door or yeah. something like that. So there's more reasons to discipline when we're not doing school, but it's definitely, I think now it's seamless. Yeah. Um, we try to, they, we're just really trying to encourage them to just be respectful and um, just be encouraging to their younger siblings because you know how kids can be yeah. like, you don't know your ABC, right? You know, right. so your we don't fourth want, grader saying that yeah. to your preschooler. And so we don't want any of that. I would say now it's pretty mom. It comes into the homeschool. Right. I'm not trying to pretend I'm a teacher anymore. Yeah. 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 I feel like I did that too. Yeah. I felt like I needed to be their teacher and I needed to be their mom. Yeah. And really, it just kind of meshes together. Yes. And I feel like the energy in our house has completely changed 180 mm -hmm. from when we were all not there right to now we are always there yes and there just seems to be a little more joy in the home always always yeah yeah so um like i said in the intro you are also a working mom mm -hmm. and that is a big piece of who you are it's a big piece of who i am and um, i just really want to share with you my audience just that you don't just have to be one or the other right like you can't not not in quotes do it all but technically you do kind of do it all right yes. you're a working mom you're a, an amazing like meal planner you you know have a job like you're doing different things mm -hmm. in your life um, and it's not just centralized around homeschool uh, so can you tell me a little bit about the um, all like the work-life balance if you could even say because I really feel balance. like there isn't one I feel uh, like that's like a weird thing to say right it is I feel yeah. like it's either you're weighed in one corner or you're in another right you, can you tell me a little bit about first what you do yeah and second how you and your family work around or have work involved in your home okay so I'm a personal trainer, but before that I was a group exercise instructor and that was something that I fell into um, simply by attending those classes and wanting to get fit after I had my fourth child. So um, I did start working just by taking on one class a week um, and my kids, my older kids were in public school at that time. So there wasn't any question of can I do this because it was one hour and I was already going to the gym and it just seemed like cool now I'm getting paid to go to the gym yeah. so let's do that mm -hmm. so I I was already working when we decided to homeschool I was working less when we first started than I am now um, and that balance has been something that I've been trying to really figure out yeah I don't know that there really is a balance um, I think when you have a passion that is, uh, I mean, this is going to sound really bad, but when you have a passion outside of just your kids, yeah, 
That doesn't sound bad at all. Yeah. I, knew. <laughs> and I think a lot of moms forget about that and they might even forget what they're passionate about and if they have any interests in other things or skills in other areas. And I'm not saying that being um, a working mom is better than not, right. but I'm just saying that if you are somebody who has gifts or talents or something like that, then if you're not using those things, you're not going to be as fulfilled as a, a homeschool mom. Um, because you're, you have this side of you that you're not using. And so for me, when I decided to homeschool, it wasn't a question of if I was going to completely quit working. I knew at that stage that I could, I had enough time in the day to do both. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think that there is a limit on what you can do because we cannot yeah. do everything. Yeah. Um, and I have been personally working through that because I definitely had way too much work to the point of where I was doing school with my kids. My kids were getting all their schoolwork done, but I just wasn't enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel like I was just checking off the box like I was going to the grocery store. Right. And I don't want homeschool to be that way because part of why I homeschool is because I want to spend time with my kids and they're only this age for a short while and I want to enjoy it. I want to be present and I couldn't do that. So I think there is a balance. I don't know what it is, yeah. <laughs> um, but I know that having nothing, no work for me is not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I know that having a hundred percent work is not healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of in this place where I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, what that balance looks like for us and in my family. But I think it's important to know that if you do want to homeschool, you don't have to give up everything in order to do it. You can make it work for you. So my next question is about what you do. So you're a fitness trainer. Um, to women specifically is what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like your kids are learning from watching you being a work and homeschool mom? Well, that is something that I think about often actually um, because they see me um, you know, working with other people. And so aside from just like the scientific facts of, um, you know, being healthy and understanding the components of that at a young age, I think it models to them, um, that you can, you can do multiple things. I think sometimes kids think like, oh, I only can do this. Right. You ask them what you want to do when you grow up and they only can say one, one thing. thing. Yeah. And there's many things that we can do with our life. And, um, specifically speaking to my daughters, um, because self-confidence is a huge issue with grown women. Um, it's something that I'm, I think about often with my daughters since I have two of them. I want them to grow up with healthy body image. I want them to grow up with good self-esteem that isn't um, driven from an appearance. I want them to be um, proud of their bodies for what it can do, not what it looks like. And so all of those things, I feel like when they see me working and they, um, they hear me authentically encouraging a, a person I'm training, it's not a script I'm following, um, of course. They, they hear that and they think, you know, wow, that's pretty cool that my mom can do this. And they've made little comments that have like affirmed that for me, but they are always listening. And I think that it is a really healthy example to, um, to show them for lots of reasons. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to, uh, be able to speak to your younger self, the mom, like before she was going to start homeschooling, mm -hmm. right? Like that the year before you started homeschooling, yeah. What advice would you give to that mom? Like she's, oh she's thinking about homeschooling. You were thinking about homeschooling. Yeah. What would you say to her? I would just say to her, it's going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, cheers like, to that. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> it's going to be okay. You're not perfect. You're going to mess up. You're not going to be patient. You don't need to pretend to be a teacher. You just need to be mom. You're, you, I mean, you teach your kids from the time they're infants. Yeah. You can totally teach your kids. Um, and I would just say, enjoy it and be, I would encourage her to be more confident in knowing what's best for her kids mm -hmm. versus thinking that since they're not doing piano and Shakespeare studies that maybe they're missing out, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but I would just encourage her to follow through with it, that it's definitely the right decision for our family at this time mm -hmm. and to just, it's going to be okay. I love it. I love it. So now we've come to the part of the interview. We're going to call it 
the mom round. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to give me your answer. First one right off the top of your head. Okay. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee for sure. Yes. What kind? How do you like it? I used to like it with a lot of cream and sugar, but that was before I knew about health and fitness. Now I can drink it black. I'm like a real coffee person when you can drink it black. Yeah. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. I like less Instagram. talking. Less talking, I know. <laughs> less articles. Yeah. yeah. And likes. Yeah. And Favorite meal to cook for your family? Hmm. I really like to bake for my family more than I like to cook. That's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, so baking, like anything, muffins, just like stuff like that. I, I like that more. Where were you when you found out you were going to have your first child? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have to really think this one back. Where was I? Yeah. In my bathroom in our tiny studio apartment. <laughs> yes. And you're like looking at it like, oh, yay. <laughs> yeah. Where's your favorite place to visit? The beach. Mm -hmm. Anywhere where there's ocean. Is my place. Definitely. Your dream family vacation? Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Islands? It's like, I'm not really picking on that. That's just like beaches elevated. Okay. <laughs> beaches <laughs> elevated. I like that. <laughs> Lastly, how long will you homeschool? Oh, man. I don't know. Definitely for the rest of this year. I see it for the next couple of years, but I really can't think too far ahead. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. I so appreciate you being on the show today. And um, I'm going to link all of Ashley's information down below. And we have a question for you. So if you are a homeschool mom, where are you from? And how long have you been homeschooling? So how many years? And the last question is, do you put exercise and fitness into your daily routine? Because we want to know. Ashley has an amazing series that she just started on her channel, all about fitness for moms, homeschool moms. Yeah, moms in general, just women. Really. Women in general, yeah. yeah. And um, so I'll link up that for her there. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. If the button is red, it means you are not already following me. And I won't take it personal, but <laughs> I will love, I would love to be your friend. So hit the subscribe button so you see everything that I upload here on YouTube. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Yay. Write a story. story. We're in the middle of filming right now. Practice. Like right now. No, don't press it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Straighten my hair today too, and I don't normally straighten it. I usually like some curl, but I didn't have time. <laughs> Me either. Mine like is yours. like halfway. Nice. This this strand. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> That's a huge piece of hair. A piece of hair. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. What was the question? I don't know. Discipline. Big hair. This like went right in my face. Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> Go upstairs. I can hear that. Go upstairs. Thank you. 20 minutes. It's like that's all we're asking. Oh, man. Okay.